Hi there, I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta here with you on today, the 10th of August, 2013. Yes, I moved uh, my little mini studio from my living room to my bedroom, so it looks a little bit different behind me. Reason why we have our second video update today, at least on this channel, Mike Adcock also put a video on his channel. I'll click the annotation on the screen if you'd rather watch him. It's because now we have Typhoon Utor or Labuyo. Uh, continuing to push off here towards the west. Right now you're looking at uh, the morphed microwave imagery and take a look at the center of your screen, an eye wall developing right around that center of circulation, a pretty defined eye wall, at least a little one. And uh, winds in the storm system definitely sustained at typhoon strength once you see that. So pressure down below 970 HPA, down the 965 HPA at this time from JMA. I am uh, very pleased at the turnaround. If you watched my last video update on this storm system earlier on in the day, uh, I was really disappointed with JMA's intensity on it. They only expected it to max out at 45 knots. That was about eight hours ago. Now they have the wind sustained at 70 knots, far above what they expected for the max intensity this morning. So they finally came around with this storm system, really matching up with many of the models. So the intensity with JMA, uh, thank goodness they came with it. And 75, gusting to 105, expecting it to max out here, at least within their three-day outlook. And 90, gusting up to 130 knots. This is going into the 13th during the evening hours here. So basically on Tuesday afternoon out there in the South China Sea. They do expect this jog towards the north. And um, really my thoughts on it at this time, I don't see that jog happening. The high pressure ridge is still in place. I do think it's going to move a little bit farther there south of Cagayan in and around Isabella uh, there into northeastern Luzon. More like what JTWC has on the storm system. Surprisingly enough, and this just never happens, uh, JMA upgraded this to a typhoon prior to JTWC doing so. And actually, JTWC only has about 50, not 5, not winds. I would not be surprised that there is 09 UTC. This is 03 UTC up they, uh, that they do have this at typhoon intensity and they expected to max out similar conditions about 90 gusting up to 110 knots so very similar to JMA but their track is farther towards the south really taking into account more of that high pressure ridge this pushing towards a low pressure area actually a tropical depression now uh, in the South China Sea and that's the other thing we're talking about today it's just not not Utur but there is a minor tropical depression out here in the South China Sea as well so that's the other thing we're talking about today uh, it's not just Utur we do have a minor TD now is this being worn down no. Is it expected to continue to remain a tropical depression? Yes. Really, don't expect the intensity to come out of this. I think it might just get sucked into uh, Utur here once it starts to push off towards the South China Sea. Seeing some people thinking a Fujiwara effect is going to happen with this. Um, if that does happen, you often get the smaller storm rotating around the bigger storm. So it would uh, rotate in this counterclockwise motion around um, Utur. So that could possibly push it slightly farther north, but I don't see the big jog that JMA is expecting out of this. This likely, if anything, is just going to get sucked right into the storm system, kind of like a star just venturing a little bit too close to a black hole out here. And then we just take a look at the overall background flow. You know I like using this tool. I, I've used it in my last several updates. It pushing across northeastern Luzon right around Isabella, and then pushing basically due west towards Hainan. Hainan, you do not need any more storm systems. We had Jebi and Mong but uh, hit in the last two weeks alone. So a third one and possibly a very strong to uh, very severe typhoon hitting the area. Uh, it, it could be disastrous. But for now, though, main topic, the Philippines. What is going to be uh, the impact here? Well, here's the map I actually created earlier on today. I'm going to be updating this after I get done with the video update to reflect that this is a typhoon now. But still, landfall early Monday morning. Expect that in and around Isabella heavy rainfall um basically 150 to 200 millimeters but along the northeastern periphery of where this is making landfall where that heaviest moisture inflow is going to be pushing on shore i do think some areas out here could see about 300 millimeters so very serious risk of flooding very serious risk of landslides and then this is still going to be enhancing that monsoonal flow as it comes off the the uh, west coast so even around manila down towards Visayas, especially on the western seaboards we could see some heavy rainfall tallying up to between 1 and 200 millimeters short time downpours up to about 50 millimeters in the course of a few hours here especially along there into northeastern Luzon like I mentioned earlier but even down there on the west coast and after this moves off there on the west coast of Luzon as well let's take a look at the winds here from the GFS which has just been absolutely um, 
awesome. I think it's a good word to use for this on uh, forecasting and predicting this uh, storm system. And at least the Genesis, it actually picked up on this nearly a week ago. So uh, it also picking on that ridge. Uh, that is building in towards the north. That reason why I think this is going to stay a little bit farther down towards the south. To mention, it's really being rather accurate with the intensity of this storm system and just depicting that eye developing and pushing it off there. So uh, a little bit farther to ahead there. We're looking at this landfall. Now, this is about 0500 Philippine Standard Time just off the east coast of Isabella. Um, we can scroll ahead here just a little bit, starting to push off there and onshore uh, around Isabella, like I said. But uh, even over here towards Manila, we could be seeing tropical storm strength winds possibly up to severe tropical storm strength winds because of that wind flow wrapping through here especially there around the mouth of manila bay off towards subic bay as well uh, you could see some funneling here, and eh, there's a possibility of some damaging winds even on the west coast, but uh, like I said, really where the bad stuff is going to be is off here towards the north. Storm surge possible as well. I mean, we could see uh, with landfall here, waves alone up to about 8 meters high, but storm surge accompanying with that coastal flooding is going to be a very serious risk. But the heavy rainfall into the mountains out here in northern Luzon, obviously, that moisture coming on shore, being squeezed out, uh, we saw that last year with Bofa down towards the south, just torrents of rain causing some very serious flash flooding. That is going to push across Luzon, though, um, going through the day on Monday into Tuesday. But Monday is just going to be a day shot across much of the northern Philippines, even down through Visayas as well. Um, I would expect it's going to be a long week. And if you got school on Monday businesses, anything like that, uh, even in Manila, it's probably going to be closed. I'd be surprised, and I think it would be rather uh, a bad idea if any uh, authorities out there left this stuff open once the storm pushed over shore uh, throughout the day on Monday. And then it's going to push off there towards the west. Um, Hong Kong, you still want to continue to keep an eye on it. If that ridge does weaken even slightly, uh, it very well could push off into your direction here, possibly bringing some damaging winds like we are actually seeing here with this GFS model run. Uh, most of the models have been keeping it farther towards the south, but this particular output starts to shift it off there towards the north. And possibly, well, <laughs> take a look at that. It looks like a rather severe and intense storm system pushing on shore there into Hong Kong. So they expect a little bit of weakening with that ridge. That's still uh, several days out, though. This is by Wednesday right now. I'm making this update on um, Saturday. So really, my cone of air would be all the way from Hong Kong all the way out there towards Hainan and then... Uh, the Philippines, pretty certain it's going to be making landfall here around Isabella to Cagayan. But then after that, it, it still could be shifting here. As long It all depends on what exactly a high-pressure ridge is going to be doing off here towards the north and when it is going to be interacting with that. So we want to continue to keep it updated. But if you are out in Hainan, Hong Kong, Macau, uh, both, most of Guangdong province, Keep a close eye on this through the coming days. We'll definitely continue to keep you updated here at Western Pacific Weather Doc for the latest on this storm system. This is just one more tool we like to use and just showing the model consensus with that definite landfall there uh, into northeast Luzon uh, through Monday morning. But then you notice in the long range, a lot of these models starting to pull off there towards the northeast. I know earlier I mentioned that a high pressure ridge, the overall background flow keeping it farther down there towards the south. And another reason why I think we got the model split, but you have that background flow. Um, still, uh, long range, it's going to be interesting how this does develop and unfold. For now, though, um, if you are out here in the Philippines, please continue to watch um, here, but also check in with Pegasa, the official agency. Also, the NDRMC uh, puts out some uh, very good warning information on these storm systems, especially when they start to push off there towards the Philippines. But that is all for right now, everybody. Thanks again for watching here at Western Pacific Weather. Uh, this is the latest satellite analysis. Uh, yeah, we're going to continue to watch this throughout the day. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them down into the comment box below. Also, let me know if you watched the entire video. I always appreciate that feedback. And I'm not sure if people sit through the 9 to 10 minute updates. I'm always afraid people fade out around 5 minutes. So I'm always trying to make these better for you, uh, the viewer out here. Thanks for watching.